In today's video, we are going to do a shootout comparison between a scintillation detector and a regular late model Geiger tube system. The two detectors that we're going to compare in today's test is going to be a Bicron 1.5 by 2.25 inch sodium iodide scintillation detector. These are very common and are extensively used in amateur gamma spectroscopy for isotope identification. The other one is going to be the Ledlam Model 44-38 Geiger tube. And this is also late model. You can both buy these right off the shelf today. These are not anything that would be considered antiquated by any stretch of the imagination. Both of these tubes operate off of 900 volts. Uh, you may see, like I mentioned in the earlier video, that this one shows 670 volts. That is a reminder I put there to myself for the operating voltage for gamma spectroscopy, which is different from regular gamma counting. So to do this properly, we're gonna need a rate meter. And what we've got here is a rate meter called the Nucleus. It's a model 500 nuclear scalar, and it's got interval count times of half a minute, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, and 10 minutes. I can even set a manual um, time scale if I wanted to. But for this purposes, we're gonna have it set to the one minute scale. I also have it preset at 900 volts, which is registered on this um, peripheral meter. And lastly, before we start, these two digital counters here I have on the left are both scintillation detectors and they are both cesium iodide based. And what I've got showing is the normal background radiation levels within the shop in microsieverts, which is a standard unit of measurement for uh, radiation. And what we have here is a range showing at about 0 0.08 to 0 0.06. Uh, microsieverts per hour, which is actually quite low. Um, most people exhibit uh, normal background radiation levels in their house, um, workshops, garages, even outdoors, um, closer to 0 0.15 microsieverts per hour. So, um, but the shop here has always been fairly low in background radiation, and that is reflected in these two detectors. Okay, so what we're going to start is a normal background count rate using the regular Geiger counter tube, the Ledlam 44-38. Now you notice that the beta shield is open, which allows betas. That we can't have because the scintillation detector is specifically uh, engineered to count gamma radiation. So we're counting gammas or naturally occurring gammas that would you normally be exposed to just walking around your house and doing whatever. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close the beta shield to make this fair. And uh, I'll just put this right here, which is where I'll put the scintillation detector when we get to that portion of the test. Okay, so for the purposes of this test, and so we just don't bore everybody to death because the topic's already boring, we are going to speed up the video why this does the one minute time count. So here we go. Okay, so 13 counts a minute using the 44-38. Let's go ahead and do that one more time out of the interest of fairness. And uh, we'll go ahead and start right now. Okay, so that one ended just a little bit slower at 12 counts per minute, which is on average. And I can tell you, we could sit here and do this all day retesting this, and we're not gonna see much variation at all. So let's move on to the scintillation detector. Okay, the scintillation detector is all hooked up, and we'll go ahead and hit the reset button, get this back to zero, and here we go. Wow, this thing really hit the quarter mile pretty fast. Look at that. In one minute, compared to 13 counts per minute with the uh, Geiger tube, the scintillation clocked in 6,268 counts per minute. The sensitivity comparison between the two are absolutely incomprehensible. In fact, if you really think about it, every single one of those registered counts is a gamma event taking place within the sodium iodide crystal. So let's do the test one more time and compare the numbers. Wow. 
Okay, so that one ended at 6,052 counts per minute, which is around a 200 count per minute difference, which is perfectly normal considering the larger surface area and the method of detection. And uh, just to kind of drive that point home, I'm going to do one more one minute test so we can compare all three. All right, so that one ended at 6,185. So that kind of gives you a good idea of the variable differences in count rate when you increase the, uh, the size of the detector. So, you know, you think about this. I mean, imagine having a scintillation crystal or detector system that accurately represents the same size of the human body. One of this efficiency. If you really ran the numbers and thought about it, the amount of gammas that impact on the human body at even any given time or day is just huge. And then if you multiply that by every single minute that you're walking around, um, we are just walking in an absolute roiling ocean of radiation at any given time. And this is here in the shop when where you've got extremely low radiation levels for background. I mean, look at these, the digital detectors haven't hardly budged. It's constantly between 0 0.06 and 0 0.08 microsieverts per hour. So uh, it's um, amazing to think about how much radiation we walk around in, at any given time. All right, well, I hope this highlights the efficiency of the uh, gamma scintillation detector. These things are absolutely outstanding tools. And on that note, it's a tool. So this is not to throw stones at a Geiger counter. A Geiger counter or a Geiger-based system has absolutely phenomenal benefits, and it can do things that a scintillation detector can't do, such as alphas and betas, within limitations. There are some exceptions to that rule, but still a Geiger system is very, very efficient. Um, at performing functions that a scintillation detector cannot do. It's kind of like automotive mechanics or, or working around your house. You know, there's a tool for every job. You're not going to use a socket set to drive nails, although some people probably have tried. All right. Um, with that being said, how about an environment where there is almost no radiation? That is going to be the subject of a very soon and upcoming video.